reason of that, I couldn't see She it. said, it's Not in my contract. It's there. a special <laughs> use. Font size 8. <laughs> Font size eight? Eight? Uh, eight's eight. very small. No, eight. 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 Wait, eight. I mean, I've had to on a couple jobs do the, uh, you know, these to, to look at plans, see how high stuff is supposed to be as far as shelves. That's a good thing. Yeah. We don't want stuff like this. You know what I need? I need the glasses that just connect in the front. Like and this? Can, yeah, yeah, like yeah. this. Yeah, they work like a channel. Do I get those on retirement? No. No, no, because I'm not retired yet. Not yet. Hey, so you got to see a little bit of the background conversation on our set. We have a couple yes. couple guests here watching us. As today. they say, little people. Yeah, <laughs> we're the little people. The little people. Yeah. The bartender. He's a very important person. And the helper. And the helper. So. Yeah. Uh, Cheers. Yeah. Hey, did you know what National Day th 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 is today? Today is National High Five Day. So after we answer every one of these speed round <laughs> questions, we're going to high five. Okay. Uh, now we just have to figure out what two weeks is because two weeks ago it was National Burrito Day. I actually thought about looking to see what yeah. day it was, but I didn't. Um, I thought it could help me come up with a cocktail. Uh, well, I'm pretty eager to try this one. <laughs> so did you want to introduce a cocktail for tonight? It is Irish cream pie cocktail. It's going oh. back to the coffee-ish. Yeah. Now, you had a White Russian, maybe we episode did. two. We did. I did. Yes, and this kind of has a little White Russian taste to, for me to it. I don't know that the, there's any... The rim is yeah. shortbread cookies. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Uh, and I was thinking about this. You you told me that it was going to be the mm. Irish cream pie recipe. It's not bad. I'm thinking to myself, have I ever... Am I a big Irish drink person? The only thing I could think of was Irish car bombs, but I'm not 21 anymore, <laughs> and I don't think that that would end up well. I think I would end up sleeping here tonight if I had to do a couple of those. Well, you'd be welcome to sleep here, but I, I'm old enough that I have never even heard of them. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. maybe in the future is what she's saying. No? Maybe. Okay. Um, never say never. So, I think one of the interesting things about these this series is that we always get feedback or we get questions that come in and it kind of helps us gauge what people want to hear about, what, what, uh, what's interesting. And so, last time we did laundry rooms, uh, we've done a couple series on paper and so there's enough questions coming in where we just wanted to do lightning rounds. Okay. Just hit, hit the questions one right after the other and, and kind of keep it moving. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set the stage for you a little bit. Okay. And that is... Tell me the rules. <laughs> no, no no rules. Just a story to get us started. So, it was beautiful weather this past weekend. Sunny? Saturday. How yes. was Sunday? I don't remember Sunday. I don't really remember the past weekend. But I remember, <laughs> I remember when this I was... This is just a story. Yes. I remember <laughs> when I was working outside, it was a beautiful day outside. Right? And it wasn't too windy. Because when I sweep out the garage, if it's too windy, it comes right back in. But anyway, we have had three huge logs in our garage, I don't know, for probably the past six months. And um, the, I don't know, I'm not a hoarder, but the, the opportunist in me, I was driving past a golf course and they had cut down these trees. So I stopped to look at the tree trunks and they're, I mean, they're, they're beautiful tree trunks. So I'm thinking, Here's a good project for me. I'm going to slice these things and then sand them down, then the epoxy them, then put legs on them, and the three tree stumps are still sitting in the garage. But anyway, the other part to this was when we moved into our house, there was a tool bench, workbench, built by the previous owner, and it was a really nice tool bench, and we had taken it from its other spot, and I had just leaned it against the wall for the past, I don't know, six years. Well, I finally just took it out. I gave one of the littles that's that's over here, Jackson, um, the drill gun, and I said, just take it apart. I, I'm never going to use this thing. So I got rid of it, right? Rid of it. And I always... So where's the wood? So the wood? We, uh, we burnt it. Okay. <laughs> um, and so I had always said, like, it's such a nice piece. I want to use it for something. But it just, I mean, it's a tool bench, and it just, it wasn't useless. It just leaned against the wall for six yeah. years. Yeah. Um, 
But the whole moral of the story was we took this week, this past weekend to clean and organize. And even if it's stuff that you think you're going to use, but you never use it, I just had to get rid of it. You do. But you have to be brutal have to ask yourself, you know, have I used it in the last 12 months? And if you haven't, chances are it should go. Or is there a specific project that you want to use it for? And if so, when's that project going to come around? You know, what's the worst thing that could happen if you got rid of it? Would it be expensive to replace if down the road you wanted to replace it? You got to think about the real estate it takes up. Yeah. Is the real estate it takes up worth? Why, why do you use the word brutal? Because I've heard you, I've <laughs> heard you use, say that specific word with this process a dozen times. Because if you're working with a professional organizer, or or actually just you know a family friend that doesn't have the the a sentimental or emotional attachment to things, um, you know if you're working with somebody, they can ask you the right questions. Um. Have you used it? Where are you going to use it? You know, why are you keeping it? If you're not working with somebody, the tendency is I might need it someday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you really have to be maybe brutal is not the right word. Realistic. Yeah, but brutal sets the stage <laughs> for it, right? I mean, real well, realistic was I like doing projects outside, and I can see myself using this, but. But there was a reason you didn't. Yeah. 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 Um, oh, I can't tell you what it was. I was, I, I want a new shed. And so I'm like, this will be the perfect thing for the new shed. I don't have a new shed. I'm not, that, I'm not getting a new shed anytime soon. That would be the question. Like, when, when realistically is a new shed going to happen? And, uh, if, you know, if it's within a year and you could move it out there, okay. More than a year, you have to really question that. Yeah. I like the real estate question too. Yes, I mean, <laughs> going into people's homes, I mean, they might have bubble wrap, you know, uh, you save bubble wrap that it takes up half of a closet. It's easier to, to recycle and buy bubble wrap when you need it in yeah. the quantity that you need. Yeah, because they don't sell bubble wrap in small packages. It's like the big round things, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, just, you know, if you're ask, if you're trying to go through the process of getting rid of the clutter, then you have to ask yourself those questions because that's what you're doing. Okay. All right. So we're going to start the lightning round. We had a nice little story to get us started, okay. right? Set the stage. And we have a list of probably five to six or seven uh, user submitted questions. And we're just going to go through them. So I'm not going to hold you to the 90 seconds. Oh, please answer, don't. But I might tell a story. <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna go through, and if we get offshoots or tangents, we can come back to those and, and add those in. Okay. Sound good? Okay. So first question: Why should I get organized? Saves you time and money. Okay. Well, how does it save? I, I understand the time part. How does it save me money? If you don't know what you have and you can't find it then you tend to rebuy it. Okay. Okay, my first story. Stop the clock. Okay. There you go. <laughs> I was moving a lady's office, and she, uh, it was not a pleasant experience for her, She so she went on vacation. So I was moving it by myself. And one of the first things I found was a really, really nice three-hole punch. And I'm like, oh, this is a nice three-hole punch. I pack it up. Before I was done, I found a dozen more. <laughs> That's crazy. 13, really nice. She didn't know what she had. She had someone else working in the office. When she made, was doing a big project, made a three-hole punch, instead of looking, she she just bought. So, cost you money. Okay, let's, that was a, that was a business. What does that look like at home then? What do we, what do we frequently buy where we, we just don't need those things? Frequently buy that you don't need. Um, or we over-purchase when we don't. When we don't need to. Well, pantry is a good ex example of that. Okay. When you have a deep pantry, you don't know what's in the back of it, and you're at the store and something's on sale and you buy it. Mm. Okay. And uh, a lot of times, once you get to the back of that pantry, it's expired food. Yeah. Yeah. You're right so about that one. Cost you money. You know what it is, too? The spice. Spices. 
spices. Right. Uh, wedding presents, they love those spinning spice yes. racks, but they all, they all go expired before you can even use them. Yes. You know if it doesn't have an expiration date, it's too old. Oh. Do things not have expiration dates? Older spices did not have expiration dates. Interesting. I didn't know that. Okay. Now I will say, the spice company says probably six months, and I do think they oh. last a little longer than that. You know, that best used by. But um, you don't want to go to the trouble of cooking a big meal and use something that's not as flavorful as it should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. But. Okay. So both a business example and uh, at home example. Okay. Uh, next part. People get paralyzed when they look at a room or look at a closet and just like shut the door up, I'll deal with it later. How or where do I start? Okay, start really little. And I, a couple of different options. Start with something that really bugs you. Oh. Okay. So that you can be successful yep. and feel good okay. and move on to the next one. Um, but again, break it down to it's really small so that you can have success. So you look forward to the next thing. And you can see, you can see parallels to this and almost anything, right? So this yeah. is January oh, first. Yeah. You say you're going to go join the gym, do seven days a week, and then you burn yourself out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So along those lines, when you do start, set a time limit. Like set appointments with yourself. And if it's for an hour, you want to set a timer for 45 minutes. Oh. Because during that 45 minutes, you're going to find things that go other places, things that you're going to donate, and you don't want to. Are you old enough to remember that family circle cartoon where the, they ask the little boy to, to mail a letter, you know, and he runs, instead of going to the mailbox, you know, oh, yeah, he, he, goes he runs out. all. Yeah, I do remember that. One. Well, that's the same thing can happen. If you're organizing a little space, but you find a stapler and you run it to your office, you go to your office and then you have to, oh, there's an email, you look at the email, yeah, yeah, yeah. 45 okay. minutes is over and you've not organized the one uh, drawer okay. that you wanted to do. So. Stick with, uh, put things in piles, but stick with where you're organizing for the 45 minutes and use that last 15 to get things to where they go. Okay. Uh, I also liked how you talked about do something that really bothers you, right? So uh, we always talk about you, you got to make it emotional, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's purchase or you know, anything like you want to focus on the emotional part of it. And if you focus on that pain point for yourself, especially, then it's you feel better after, even if it's just a small thing, like you said, you feel much better as a result. Yeah, you have to have success because if, if you if you don't give yourself that time at the end, when when you're done or you have to move on to something else, and, and you've got piles. You've got a pile of donations, you've got a pile of trash, you've got a pile of recycling, but you walk away and yeah. when you come back, you, you couldn't do it, you, you feel defeated instead of... Um, feeling good and that's what it's you want to build yourself up for success well I know this story is going to ring true for you one of the first closet jobs I went on uh, the uh, clients hanging system had broken oh. and everything had just kind of caved in on top of itself right and the, the response until we got there was <laughs> just shut the door right like out of sight out of mind and, yeah. and, and not wanting to deal with it because, but I mean, if you think about it, even a small walk-in closet, there's a lot of stuff in there, there's a right? Lot of stuff. And so you can get overwhelmed with that when when something goes wrong. Yeah. So okay. if the closet is overwhelming, do just one section. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Okay. Um, okay. Let's do two. The best organizing tips that you would tell somebody to get started with. Well, the first thing you do is you want to sort and you want to put like things together. Like things together. Like things together. What? Like like colors together? Like usefulness what, or what? Well, it depends on where you are. And it's funny because people think differently. And there's no right or wrong answer. I had um, organizing with kids. And I would put a hula hoop and like put all the like things oh. together. And some people would do it by size. Some people would do it by color. But... Generally speaking, you know, um, if you're in a closet, you put the uh, sleeveless together, you put the short sleeve together, mm -hmm. you put the long sleeve together, you put the jackets together, you put all the black pants together. 
so you see what you have. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're in the kitchen, you put all the 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 utensils together, and then you break those down into what kind of utensils. Is it a baking utensil? Is it a prep utensil? Okay. Well, so that makes sense. so sort bringing all the like things together. Then you want to keep them close to where you use them. The more often you use them, the closer they get. Um, you said something that I keyed on there is, let's not overcomplicate this too, right? If kids can understand, you put a hula hoop on the ground and say, hey, anything that you think is a light, just put it right there. Use the same approach for yourself. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, don't, don't overcomplicate it. Don't make There's, it more difficult than it needs to be. There's no right or wrong. Okay, perfect. Um, that was the first one, like things. What's the, what's the second one? Keep them close to where you use them. Close to where, all right, I need an example for that. Um, if you are, you've got tablecloths, you want to keep them close to the dining room table. Okay. Um, if you play games in a TV room, you want to have your games in the TV room somewhere, whether that's in a cabinet, a closet, um, okay. anything. Just, um, I'm going off on a tangent here. So does that mean you need to think about your space differently? If you don't have storage space in a certain area of the home, do you think do you, do you have to think about putting some storage space there? Yeah, I, I talk to people, if they have magazines, where do you read the magazines? Well, I read them in the living room. Well, where do you put them? Well, just anywhere. So, you know, get a, a magazine okay. rack or a basket. Uh, uh, I like, it has to be functional. Yeah. But now there's just a plethora of choices and beautiful choices. Yeah. So it can be just functional or you can make it beautiful that adds to decor in your home. Okay, I like that. Yeah. And actually, uh, Lindsay has worked with us when we've redesigned uh, our house, and uh, or the first floor, I guess. And um, we have a architect's table the, the, for mm. like architectural plans, right? But it's, it's low off the ground. But it's got these huge drawers where if we need games or the kids have drawing supplies, you know, they can have that there. And then sitting on top of it is an area where you could have playing cards or magazines or something mm -hmm. else like that. And I guess I never really thought of it in the purpose of containing or holding or storing, but it definitely could be used that way. Yeah, that would be my third tip if, if we went to three. Let's go ahead, go to three. Um, once you have what you're keeping, Put it in a container that allows for growth. Okay. To, um, easy to put away, easy to get. Um, now going back to two. There are We're just jumping around. Yes, we are. No rules. Go ahead. Fast, lightning. Um, there are great products now, too, when you think about the home. If you have pots but you don't have storage, there, you, you can get a great pot rack. So store uh, things in plain sight, but they're functional. Yeah. Um, ottomans now that open up and you can put blankets in them. So if you don't have room for a blanket in the living room but you want to snuggle up on the couch with one, you don't want to traipse to the bedroom every time. Yeah. So get an ottoman that has storage in it. Okay. So, Use pieces of furniture or uh, that can be functional too. Okay, I like it. Uh, the next one you, you already talked about a little bit, but how long should we be spending on these first steps, right? You said an hour. Is this something that we should come back to every seven days? You know, from a length perspective, what are we looking at? Um, it depends on how quickly you make decisions because okay. what you're doing requires a lot of decisions and, and your calendar and your life, your schedule. So I think you have to really look at what you want to organize, how many areas, and I think you have to look at your life and your schedule and be realistic about what you can commit to and then put it on the calendar like a real appointment that you have to, to keep. Whether that's an hour every Saturday morning or a half an hour four times a week. You don't have to give a whole day to it. Uh, in fact, I think that would be too much. Uh, so it's a frequency and a time, uh, a frequency and a, the time that you can allow. Um, you can make great headway if you just 
keep working on yeah. it and keep feeling successful so you want to go to the next one. Yeah. I, I will tell clients, you know, if you have a Saturday morning and you want to organize a room, give yourself an appointment so you have a stop time. And then again, stop, have a timer before that stop time. People have a tendency when they're really close to being done, like, oh, I'll just keep working. Um, I'll just keep working. I'll, okay. I'll, I can finish this and I'll be done and then it'll feel great. But it, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Sometimes it's better to stop when you said you would stop because that way you know the next time you set an appointment, it's going to be that length of time. And you don't get drained. It can feel, again, setting yourself up for success. I like that. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. It was a process. Uh, if you want, need to organize, it didn't happen in a day. Yeah. So it's not going to unhappen in a day. That's something important to remember. Yeah, it's a yeah. process, and you you have to go back and look at the places you've done and feel really good instead of looking at everything you have to do. You have mm. a plan for it, so um, you have to put, kind of put blinders on. Okay. Because it can be overwhelming and a little sometimes defeating, and you don't want that. Okay. I like it. Yeah. Good. And, and see how these things are starting to weave together, too, right? I mean, you say uh, set, a, set a plan. And then do something, take some type of action, even if it's small, right? So these things all start to join together to, to be more cohesive and strategic. Um, but so I think I'm an organized person. But some people don't feel that way about themselves. So can you learn to be more organized? Absolutely. Uh, or, organizing skills are learnable. Um, one, I think I mentioned her one other session, but Jolene Morgenstern has, is for me, kind of a rock star of organizing. And she's written several books. Um, organizing from the Inside Out, I think, might have been my first organizing book I read. I think you said that before, yeah. And she prefaces every book by um, a story. Because she, when I go to conference, it's a common theme. Everybody was born organized. You know, they, they organized their Barbie dolls, they separated their M&Ms by color, but she, she wasn't. And it was when she had her first daughter that she was at home, it was a beautiful day, and she's like, oh, I should take a walk with my daughter. Baby, by the time she got the diaper bag put together and filled, no time for a walk. So she learned the skills. And um, again, I... I find I have two kinds of clients. I have clients that know how, they just don't have the time. Yeah. Don't have the time and try to do more than is physically possible in a day. Um, then the other client that doesn't, doesn't know how. Their brain just doesn't work that way. And for them, it's, it's really, you can see light bulbs go off. I can be talking about spices and you know, so how do you use them? What do you do? Alphabetize them or put, if they're in a drawer that you see just the tops, put labels on the top so they can mm -hmm. see what they've got. And just, you can see light bulbs going yeah. off. They never thought about it. And once you teach them, yeah. you, they can maintain it. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to double back to this here in a couple minutes, but you're saying a lot of things that make sense, uh, but they're, they're also visible in other professions and other areas of life. So I just make sure that I touch on that before we, before we end. All right, last one. Uh, we've got some progress. We've, we've dedicated some time. We've, we've had a couple light bulb moments. How do I maintain this past that initial rush of, I really like how my house looks, I like how it feels better. In a month, when I'm running from baseball to piano to wherever else, how do I maintain that? Um, there has to be a little discipline. Um, and the I, like, one... I like discipline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the little the smiling at me. You must not like discipline. Um, I'm okay with it. It's <laughs> okay. One of the, oh, now I've lost my train of thought. Um, one of the things about getting organized, if you have a place for everything, that if you have a crazy week, it's okay. You haven't had time to put something away. If you have a place for everything, you can give yourself a half an hour on a weekend and get everything back in place. Yeah. So easier to maintain, 
um, because you set that foundation. But it does take a little discipline. Like if you've created a home, then you do have to put it back where it goes. But so do all doable. So you, you said a couple of things. One, if if we feel unorganized and we are unorganized, it ha it hasn't happened in the space of a day or a week. It's taken time to get to that point. It's going to take time to get out of that as well, right? So uh, also some you said give yourself a chance to be successful. Yes. These little things we can do to get momentum and gain and uh, some better feelings around it, and then future maintenance isn't isn't as bad. Not as bad. Okay. I'll say one more thing. Um, I see some people never start the process because they want it perfect. Yeah, perfect doesn't exist. Perfect doesn't exist, and it's better to just create some kind of system, some kind of home for things, and then tweak it as you go. Make it better. Yeah. But just start. Starting is the hardest part. Yeah. And so just start. In everything. In everything. In everything. In everything. Um, so I wanted to double back to this comment okay. here, and... Um, You've talked about, you haven't said the word, but you've talked about experience and how a different set of eyes, an experienced set of eyes, can see things differently and as a result, give other people the, the ability to be successful in their own lives, right? So whether it's a person who's not organized, never felt organized, but you ask the right questions to change the perspective mm -hmm. so they, they, it clicks for them, they get it, right? Uh, it's looking at systems, whether it's a kid with a hula hoop on the ground or an adult male that has too many golf clubs and footballs and everything else, right? And, and changing the conversation. Um, and this isn't, this isn't meant to be a pitch, but experience matters. Mm -hmm. And knowing how to ask the right questions and knowing how to look at a space and see potential with it is, is something that, uh, if you haven't been trained, and you don't have years of experience, it's, it, you can't replicate it. I really feel, talking closets now, what sets us apart from the other closet companies is us looking at it from a professional organizer's way of thinking, uh, professional organizer's eyes. Yeah. We're, we're not there to sell you a closet, we're there to design a closet that works for you and well, your belongings. And, um, I already knew this to a, a limited extent, um, but in, I don't know, probably 100% of the cases, the client wants something done. They know they need something done. It's just the best use of how, it's going, how they're going to use it. And, you can, and again, you can't replicate that with a 3D software program or anything like that. It's got to be people focused. So. Okay. Oh, we forgot the high five after every oh question. Oh my gosh! Uh, it's National <laughs> High Five Day. I totally buried the lead on that. All right, we did, we did one, two, three, four, five. We did six questions. One, two, three, four, five, oh, six. six. All right. Cheers. I'm done with mine. She's almost done with hers. We'll be back in two weeks. And it was tasty. It was very good. It was very good. Maybe we're gonna have to have like an all-star game of. Closets and cocktails, where we just have all the drinks we've had. We're going to have to have more people with us, though. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. Bye. Well, how did we do? Good. Good? Well, I'll stop this one. <laughs>